let's start looking at wave packets. And great news, fresh new markers that I think don't squeak and write much better. So this is an example of a wave packet. I've written down my a wave function, that's a function of position. And what is this? This is a Gaussian. So if we think about this, it would be centered on x equals 0, and it looks something like that. And so what is this maximum value? Well, that would be where x is equal to 0. e to the 0 is 1. So this would be a. So this is kind of what it looks like. And it's not something that repeats. So this is a Gaussian, kind of a nice example of a wave packet. So the notion being that it would be kind of one area where a particle is, rather than being really spread out, is like a plane wave, which are going to be momentum eigenstates. So the first thing we need to do, as normal, is normalize this. So 1 is going to be equal to my integral of negative infinity to infinity of psi star psi. And so that would be going to be magnitude of a squared coming from the first a star. And then e to the negative x squared over a squared times itself would be negative 2 x squared over a squared dx. So we then need to do that integral, and what you are going to get, and this is an example of something that's really nice to use a table of integrals for. So anytime you have a Gaussian, if you are only doing a partial integral, you get the error function. So be careful because when you go to use certain tools like a calculator or maybe tools online, and you're integrating a Gaussian, you'll get like this ERF, E-R-F, and that's error function. That doesn't mean it's literally an error, it's just that's what the integral of the Gaussian is defined to be, it's a special function. But in this case, because we're integrating over all space, we don't actually need that. We can just say what this integral is. So this is something you would get from the book, and it is square root of pi over 2 times a. And so we would rearrange, and you then get that your a squared value, right? So take this, flip it upside down, is square root of 2 over pi, 1 over a. Now, don't get too psyched out about the notion that we have our square root. So we could just say here that a is equal. One thing that I would like to do is take the square root of this whole thing, so we could actually call this the, the fourth root, and we have 2 over pi, but now notice since this wasn't under the square to begin with, if we pulled it under it would become a squared. So we can write it this way, the fourth root of 2 over pi a squared. Okay, so now let's, let's try to do a calculation with this. And let's start with, because um, I won't get through everything in this video, let's just start with what the uncertainty in position is. And remember that how we define this, like we met this back, I don't know, chapter 2, chapter 3, it's, it's the same thing, that whenever we have the uncertainty of something, that's going to be the expectation value of the operator squared minus the expectation value of the operator squared. So remember that that's always the definition whenever you have an uncertainty. So now what we have to do is actually calculate what those things are. So when I say, okay, what is the expectation value of this operator squared? That's still just my inner product of x squared with my wave function. So now we turn that into an integral. Now remember, you know, we did the infinite well for a little bit, and we got to always take our integral and make it be 0 to L because our wave function was 0 elsewhere. Here, yeah, it goes close to zero, but we still have to actually do that integral from negative infinity to infinity. So please, please, please remember that the general form of this, this inner product is always negative infinity to infinity. Sometimes your potential is such that you know your wave function is zero in a region. So please make sure you don't make the mistake of writing this down as zero to L. That's completely meaningless here. So now we are going to take our wave function and so first for the bra, we would have what our um, psi star is. Now notice that a here is real, so we just get to write that down as it is, one fourth. And then we have our wave function, which again is entirely real, so we don't have to worry about any sort of complex conjugate. And then we have x squared, where our operator is just literally x squared. 
and then we have the same function again. So 2 over pi is squared to the 1 fourth power. You can see why it's kind of nice to write it this way. e to the negative x squared over a squared dx. So we can pull that term out, right? So you have 2 over pi a squared. Now it's just the 1 half power. And now remember that in this case, our operator is just the variable x. So if it was a derivative, we couldn't necessarily move things around, and that's what happens, for instance, for momentum. But in this case, we can actually move things around if we want to. So I can rewrite this as x squared e to the negative 2x squared over a squared. Please remember how exponentials work when you combine them. And we're left with this. Do I have any idea what this integral is off the top of my head? Of course I don't. Um, this is again where you would look at the integral table in your book to see as a starting point, is there something relevant there? Okay, let's look in the handy book and see what's there. And the one thing to notice is that, right, this is an integral from negative infinity to infinity. If there was, for instance, an indefinite integral, I could potentially use that. And what I see, hmm, because what's important is to make sure that you have the x up top. So I see some stuff that's helpful. When I look down, what I actually see, and I'll talk through how we can actually do this. Um, what I see is f25. So f25 says that 0 to infinity of x squared e to the negative x squared dx is equal to square root of pi over 4. Now, you might say, Dr. Ackerman, this is not identical to this integral. And you're, you're right, it's not. And so the question you have to ask yourself is, can we do a transformation to get from this to this? So one thing that might help is to do a little bit of a u substitution. So let's call this instead. I like explicitly writing things differently to not confuse myself. So if we wrote this instead as u squared minus u squared du, now we can see that I can say that, okay, u equals, right, in this case it would be square root of 2, x over a, right? And so then that makes my power fine. So then you would also have to do the substitution for the dx, the du, and you would have to do a substitution up front. But that would just give you a, a change of, of your coefficients. So you can do a u substitution here and do it. The second problem are the bounds of the integral. Hmm. This is where you can use symmetry arguments, right? This is explicitly the integral from 0 to infinity. Here we have negative infinity to infinity. So what do we do about this? Well, let's think about the symmetry. Notice that here we have this function, which is just a modified Gaussian, right? There's a factor of 2, but that's like adjusting its width, basically. So this is still a Gaussian, and you can see the symmetry it has. It has the same type of symmetry as x squared, right? So we have that even symmetry, and we have an even symmetry function times an even symmetry function. That yields an even symmetry function. So what we get to do at that point is say that when I have my integral of x squared e to the negative 2x squared a squared, and don't lose this coefficient, I'm just writing it down this way in particular, that the symmetry is such that 0 to infinity is going to give me the same integral as negative infinity to 0. So that means I can take this and multiply it by 2 and convert it from 0 to infinity x squared e to the negative 2 x squared over a squared. And sometimes you say, well, why do we need these symmetry arguments? Well, this is a really simple example. This 
is what is in your table of integrals, not negative infinity to infinity. So you have to make the judgment of can I get from here to here? And the answer is yes, you can by using a symmetry argument. So that's 10 minutes and the board is full. I'll stop there. Um, I'll continue a little bit in the next video of making some progress on this, but I'll, I'll skip kind of the full integration step here. So I hope that this has helped you set it up and we'll go a little bit further to think about this.